Good morning. Are you making a mess in the tent? Yeah. <laughs> I'll wake you up. No. I'm just hibernating. How do you like your Costa in the morning? I like mine out and about. I'm abusing this thing. This thing's just brilliant. Coffee in bed without even getting up. It was a bit cold and a bit windy last night. We're right by Land's End in the tent. So, um, yeah. Treat yourselves to a nice espresso, get some energy up, and then we'll get out and about and fire up these Vogues again. It's really, really sunny, but because we are just on the coast, it's so windy, we do not fancy making any food. I did buy bacon and eggs, but we're gonna. We got save proper that. English food, stop your moaning. That is a cheese and HP brown sauce sandwich. Yeah. What more can you ask for? Not much more. What a beautiful campsite. Not only because it was empty, but a really nice place. Really lucky with the weather today. Aren't we just? It's gorgeous. So hopefully we get some good riding today. Last night we stayed so close to Land's End that we got to go in and try and get the obligatory photograph. But I believe they tried to charge you for parking on the way in. And I know this because we came here once before, me and Eva, and the man stuck his hand out of the box and Eva just drove right by him. Didn't show him a bit of attention, did you? That's right, yes, I did do that. Yeah. Because I genuinely <laughs> didn't see it. It was awkward for me, I was following. And you just assumed that motorbikes are free in places like this. Well, let's see if we can um, pull that little stunt off again. We only want to go down and get the obligatory photograph. I know it's not the most southerly point of the UK, but it's where you come for your photos, so there's nobody in the little box. Ticket machine now, There's no. Hu it's not human anymore. So there's a start and finish marker here on the ground. I don't even see that written in the paint and on the things there. And um, that is for the Land's End to John O'Groats run. We'll definitely have to do that one day. What we really need is someone to take our photo. That's that geezer. Excuse me, fella. You want to be good enough to take a photo for us? Yeah? That'll be amazing. Yeah, yeah perfect. Amazing, thank you. See you again on the road. Probably. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, no. Beautiful coast over there. We are so lucky with the weather. What's really interesting is everywhere we stop, it doesn't matter whether it's Tesco's car park or Land's End, everybody we meet wants to come over and have a look at the bikes, you know, because they've not seen one before. And um, yeah, so many questions about it, but it's interesting when you tell them it's a Chinese bike, I thought it would be met with, you know, some negativity and stuff, but everybody's so positive about it. Everybody seems to love it. And, you know, I've told everybody the specs of this bike so many times now I know it off by art. <laughs> but um, yeah, everybody's really um, positive and um, enthusiastic for the Chinese bikes. Feels like October on a sunny day could be the perfect day for this place and Cornwall in general. Anybody that has travelled to Cornwall before, motorbike or a car, you know how busy this place is get. So this time of the year seems to be a winner actually. I remember being here in September um, last year or two years ago as well and it was so busy we were stuck in gridlocks at all times on the lanes because people would travel here from London and all over all over the world really and then they would get stuck in their cars because they're just not used to driving on such a small lanes today it's really beautiful the bike is sticking to the road I absolutely love it those tyres are so good there always is man in a van to ruin the fan. Oh, he probably heard us saying that he's blocking our fan. <laughs> I honestly don't think it matters where you're going to go and what your route is going to be in Cornwall. As long as you stick to the coastline, it will be beautiful, especially on a day like this. There are dozens and dozens of these small villages to find and explore in Cornwall. Eva's definitely right, when you come to Cornwall, ideally follow the coastal routes around but um, definitely stay off the main roads and find all the small roads closer to the edge. 
Oh, this could involve some off-roading. I'm not sure we've got tyres for off-roading, do we? I'll be alright. It'll be worth it. So just over this hedge we can see the remains of the old Cornish tin mine. I think you can carry on down that trail, I've seen this online. This is um, Tet down there. Yeah, me too, but I'm not doing it in this tyres. I don't think it's wise to do Tet on bikes with panniers. What harm could happen? Apart from being quite windy, it's beautiful in here. It's and there's old tin mines, which... So this is um, the area of Botalic which was um, famous for mining. As you can see around us, there's loads of remains of the different mines and uh, we can walk down along some. The southwest coast path runs right alongside it. So it's a great place to go for walking. You up for that? No, you go, I'll mind the bikes. Yeah, I thought you might. Yeah, I'll mind the bikes and you go and have a wander around. That building over there is the Botalic Mine Counting House. But more importantly, now it's used as a cafe. So it's a great place to stop for a brew if you walk down here. So as you can see, if you're prepared to do a little bit of walking off the, uh, the main track, you can actually get right down in amongst these mines. And um, yeah, I, I think this is probably some sort of old storage area and stuff. I won't pretend I'm an expert, I'm just curious and want to go have a look. So we can go right in here. How is that for a reward for walking down off the beaten track? Beautiful coastline. And I don't know if you can see that down there in the distance. But there's some more mines down there right on the edge. I did have a quick Wikipedia. Uh, tin mining is not my area of expertise. But um, the Cornish mines were used for mining tin, copper and refined arsenic. And they did a lot of it here. I tell you, when you walk a short section of this, you can really understand why people want to walk the southwest coastal path. It really is stunning along the coastline, and you wouldn't get to see any of this from the road. Hey, fancy a bit off-roading? Absolutely. I need to switch my bike into uh, not road mode. What is it? On this one, it's called Enduro mode, but we're simply removing traction control and ABS. I'm not sure we really need to, but this is as much off-roading as we're going to go. So just to demonstrate it, all we do is push and hold the mo push and hold the mode button, and you'll see on the screen it says Enduro mode, traction control, and ABS off. We have checked, and believe it or not, this is actually still an official road, and it is legal to ride down here. I don't mean it's smart, but yeah, but why not? Exactly, why not? All right, let's go see what's down this trail then. Wow, what a view. Some beautiful views, I know that. Eva, you should have walked down along that coastal path. It's really stunning no, along there. No, I'm all right. You walked it for me, it's okay. I was saying, I can understand why people want to, to do that, if I'm honest. There must be so many things you get to see. Mind you, it's all right when you say that all enthusiastically walking downhill, right? When I was coming back up, up and I'm puffing, things are a bit different. <laughs> I didn't film that bit. Well, this is probably as much off-road as anybody else is likely to do on a bike like this, especially on road tyres. And, um, yeah, no problem. We're definitely no pros off-road, that's for sure. So far, so good. Anyway, the suspension never seems to disappoint on this bike. It just feels like it's in control 100% of the time. Well, I assume this is still the road. Oh, this looks very pathy. Committed now. <laughs> We're here now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the trouble with this off-roading lark, isn't it? Once you start, you often pass the point of no return. Oh, we've got to be a bit careful here. This looks a lot steeper up the other side. I think we should um, 
to stop here and exercise a bit of caution where we can turn them a minute and I'm just going to go and have a look because there's a steep bit on the other side there. What is this? Does it... We definitely cannot get up that hill. Yeah, I'm going to um, go and inspect. Well, it looks like there's an easy way and a hard way. I don't fancy the hard way very much. I'm not sure the easy way is much better either, either. Oh, I don't know that bad. Well, I'll go as far as this next corner. But I think I'll be all right, but perhaps we better play it safe. No, all right, let's quit while we're ahead and turn around. It might be smarter. I'm pretty confident I could do it. But this is a team effort. And with two of us, we double the chance of bollocks in it up, haven't we? Come on, one of them walking holidays, I am. Still marked as the road on the sat and have along here. I mean, there's, there's tyre marks down here. Four by fours and that are definitely doing it. Let us make a clever and smart decision today, Eva. We'll turn around and go back to where we came. This will look as flat as a pancake on the GoPro later. How should I turn this around? I don't want to fuck it up. It's quite heavy to move it back. Do you know what? It's so easy on your own bike because if you drop it, you know you dropping it and it's your money. But when you have a long bike, it is a bit like, oh no, 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 no. no. Well, I get myself out of this pickle now. Oh, that grass is slippery and just spinning on that, so I need to stay on the gravel. All right, here we go. You want me to come by and lead the way? Yeah. What is it you always used to say to me? More power? More power, yeah. It may not help the situation, but it would definitely end the suspense. Consistent power, especially when we go up the hill at the other end, you'll have loose stones. The rear wheel may want to spin. Let it keep the power on. Don't give it an ample, obviously, but don't stop. Just keep going up. This is another classic example of showing that you do not need to travel thousands of miles to go and have an adventure. We've literally gone to the next county. I've never been here before. And it's beautiful. Of course, the weather really helps. Look at that view. This bike's just that this bike just does it so easy. It's fine. Even on the road tires. Which is a bit irresponsible. But it absolutely manages fine, even for someone like me who doesn't have that much experience. Reality is that this is a real world test of the off-road capability of the Vogue 900. I'd be amazed if you know, 95% of people buy this and then even do a road like this, but let alone do anything, you know, harsher than this. So we can confirm it is absolutely fine for that, no problem. There's a really interesting set of trails that's developing all around Europe called the ACT, Adventure Country Tracks. And if you fancy a bit of off-roading, specifically for the more bigger adventure bikes, I believe that's what it's aimed at then uh, have a look online or on YouTube. Oh, it looks like a lot of fun. All right, time to start picking on the Vogue VSX 900 again. I found something else I can pick a hole in. So my fuel gauge has just started flashing. Uh, and I can't tell you how many miles I have left because it doesn't have a, a range indicator. So I don't know, you have to try to figure that one out for yourself, I guess. You're just sort of left guessing. So that's not ideal because now I'm panicking. You know, have I got five miles left? Have I got 50 miles left? I have absolutely no idea. So that means that the very next destination needs to be a fuel station. Nothing ruins a ride more than watching your fuel gauge flash at you. Fuel anxiety. Unless you're either in the car, in which case that one's permanently on. Be all right, be all right. This bike can be really sporty as well. And it's an odd thing because you feel like you're um, going faster than you are. You're getting to go up and down the box using the quick shifter. 
and it's so confidence inspiring going into the corners it just handles beautifully it's exactly where i want it to be at all times it's a really enjoyable bike to ride this those brembo brakes do a nice job of slowing you up when you need to as well for me a motorcycle isn't just a, a thing to go to work like the car or you know whatever and you know you can count the mpg and whatever else it does and all its tech but the most important thing is that the bike has to put a smile on your face you know you, you have to every time you get back off the bike you have to think oh i've jotted that ride over you know i can't wait to get back out and get back on the bike if you don't feel like that about your bike you definitely have the wrong motorcycle let's grab some petrol which did confuse me yesterday when we filled up because of course this bike's keyless so it's actually on this key fob and there's a little clicky thing pull that one out and there's your key so hopefully you can see this the bike says it's been doing 48.5 miles per gallon now that's probably unfair on this bike because it has been a, uh, a press bike and um, yeah we've been mucking around on it down the lanes and stuff so obviously nobody has been looking after the fuel economy on this but we just absolutely brimmed the tank can't get another drop in and there's 737 miles on the clock so we will see how many miles this has when the red light comes back on oh Doris yeah he loves it loves the bike that is a Vogue that is love Vogue Have a look at that, St Michael's Mount. That's a, um, a National Trust property I believe now. When the tide's out, which I think it is now, you can actually walk from the, the mainland across and go up into the, uh, the castle and house and that over there. I just had to stop here with a nice view for St Michael's Mount. And it's just so nice today. I had to take this opportunity to make a coffee. Feels like it's the middle of summer right now. Normally we would use a ground coffee with our out-in coffee machine, but I think it's quite messy when you want to have it when you don't have a tap with you to clean it out. So I bought some of these yesterday and they actually not too bad. You tried one this morning. Much better. Obviously a mandatory galaxy chocolate. Tell them why these are good. Do you know why they're good? Oh, do you know why these chocolates are good? Because they don't melt. Test it for yourself. I think we're getting a bit obsessed with this coffee thing. Are we getting obsessed with coffee? <laughs> I think we might be. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's a little bit like... Um... Look at it this way, right? There is a cafe just over there behind us, but we've got this, so we would probably go into that cafe yeah. and probably spend a tenner on coffee and a bit of cake or something. Probably. Whereas this has cost... 50 pence once you've got the machine all right it's not a cheap machine to be fair yeah but if you drink coffee as much as we do and there's two of you getting out of it it'll pay for itself pretty quick well this machine was sent to us by Alton to test it out and we actually really love it I do I did bring with us um, one from home that I don't really use but this thing takes by, 200 by the, seconds yeah, to reload so it's so fine by the time I'm finished with my coffee it'll be ready for the next one but you have to drink after me. <laughs> what a place Cornwall is. You were saying the other day about how Cornwall has a special vibe of its own. And I can see that, you know, I could spend a lot of time sat around here doing nothing, just watching the waves and yeah, enjoying the vibes. Well, we don't have all day to sit and look at the waves. We're supposed to be putting miles on these bikes. Yeah, let's put some miles then. You do have your key, don't you? <sighs> don't start that again. I've got to check now. We need to test this theory. We want to know how far you can go from the key before it conks out. So if I left my key on that wall, the bike would probably start, but would it let me ride off home or would it conk out at the end of the, the car park? That's a problem if that's the case, because I will leave it behind. I think, you, I think you will ride as far as you want. I don't think that the um, keyless is a problem if you're used to it and you're the sort of careful person but if you are rich sooner or later something will happen well that was an excellent location for a stop we managed to avoid going into the the busy town just up the way 
I'm paying 10 quid for a coffee. How tight are we? Hey, I'd rather put that 10 quid in the petrol tank though and go for a ride. Well, we've been riding a little while now. We did the, uh, the A30. I think we've been riding probably an hour and 45 minutes, something like that. And for me, I can tell you that's enough time for me on this bike. Not, um, the seat is very good, but for me, my legs are a little bit of an acute angle. If anything, I'd like to raise the seat a little bit on this one, just to give myself a little bit more leg room. But, hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, something like that, is a respectable amount of time on any bike. The seat's very comfortable. Well, we just stopped just to uh, have a bit of a stretch of our legs. We've been sat on these bikes for a little while now. We are about 300 miles in on these Vogue 900 so far. And um, yeah, we're becoming a, a bit aware that we are not here to sell these bikes to you, right? We're just no. trying them out and giving you our opinion. We've got nothing but positivity to say about them, to be honest. I mean, I've picked a few small holes, but so far, yeah, really impressed. Personally, I think I would try Rox Rises. I still, I'm, I still think on that, yeah. but that's because of you know back problems and all that stuff. But everyone is different. For me, I would like to raise the seat. So that's an, that would be mm. a big plus point, perhaps on the next model of these, if they had an adjustable seat height. Yeah. But having said that, that again, like you putting Rox Rises on, that's a personal thing. And, um, you know, exactly. people who are short in stature will be able to ride this bike with absolute confidence. Oh, yeah. Flat-footed both sides. Yeah, 5 foot great. 7, 29-inch uh, leg, I'm completely flat-footed. So yeah. those of you who, you know, can't climb on board the Tenere World Raid, which is bloody tall, then, uh, you know, this is the one for you. It's really nice um, two-day trip in Cornwall we had. That's just over beautiful. 300 miles we did just in those two days blue skies and sunshine in October yeah so we are gonna make the most of this so join us again in the next one and we'll go somewhere else leave us a comment if you've got any questions we will answer all the comments and see you on the next one love, love you bye, bye.